Welcome to this week's worship service at St. Paul's United Methodist Church here in Nitro, West Virginia. My name is Greg Markins. I'm the pastor here, and I'm so glad that you chose to worship with us today. As a way to let us know that you're here, I invite you to like our feed or comment in the page below. And so now, let us worship together. Mountains and the sea, your river runs with love for me, and I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth, and I will daily lift my hands, for I will always sing of when your love came down. Yeah, I can sing of your love forever. 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 Over the mountains and the seas, your river runs with love for me. And I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth, and I will daily lift my hands, for I will always sing of when your love came down, yeah. I can sing of your love forever. 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 And oh, I feel like dancing, yeah. It's foolish, yes, I know. But when the world has seen the light, they will dance with joy like we're dancing now, yeah. I can sing of your love forever. 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 Let us join our hearts together in prayer. Gracious and loving God, thank you for knowing and loving us unconditionally. Time and time again, we have messed up. But thank you, God, that even though you know we are headed to sin again, you not only still love us unconditionally, but you offer us forgiveness, the opportunity to have a clean record and with new grace and mercy every morning. So allow us, O God, to not become content in our daily journey. Forgive us for not moving as fast as we should have in the past and for not helping someone in need when we could have. You have given us the spirit of discernment, but we ask for the wisdom to see more clearly and to find you in your sustaining presence that we may be a blessing to others. You know the silent cries in our hearts. We know that you have already met the need. Now, God, tap into our hearts true desires. Touch families, friends, and most importantly, our neighbors. So thank you for being fully present in our lives giving us the power to love one another with the love of Christ. We will continue to give you glory, honor, and praise, believing that your grace is sufficient enough for us and your love endures forever. This we pray to you through your Son, Jesus, as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. How are you all this morning? You know, I think spring might be just around the corner. Um, we were at my mom's house um, last weekend, and I actually heard the peepers. Um, and then one day this week, um, one of the twins, I think it was Kennedy, said, what's that noise? Um, the peepers are in the ditch in our backyard. So I'm very, very hopeful that that winter is over and that spring's just around the corner. Well, I have a question. You know, I bet there's two things that you say and you say them and you don't even really think about them when they happen. Question, what do you do when someone sneezes around you? Well, I say, God bless you. And then the other one that you do pretty much that's some of our magic words that we talked about a while back um, is when someone does something for you or gives you something that's nice, don't you say thank you? You thank them for what they've done for you. Well, no, you know, sometimes thank you just doesn't really seem to be enough. And I'll send, you know, one of these thank you cards. And inside that note, I'll thank them and um, show my appreciation for whatever it is that they did for me or that person did or for whatever they gave me, that special gift. Well, another way that you can thank someone or show them how thankful you are is to do something in return. Um, you know, like if one of your friends invites you over to spend the night or to come over to their house and, and you all play together, you can do the same thing. You can reciprocate that feeling and, and do the same thing for them. Well, it's important for us to show that we're thankful for the things that people do for us or the blessings that we have in our lives. Well, there's a very special way of saying thank you. You can be thankful living. You can um, show that by the way that you live, that you're thankful for the blessings that God gives you every day. That's a thank you to God every day. Well, did you know that God blesses us every day? He loves us. He loves us unconditionally. We've talked about that before. But what are the ways that God does bless you? Well, let's see. You have parents that love you or grandparents or other friends that love you or your friends, parents that love you very much. Um, you have food to eat every day. You have things that you can drink, milk, water. Um, you have nice warm places to live, nice houses that you live in, clean clothes to wear every day. Well, God may not put the food on our plates when we sit down to eat our dinner or put the milk or water in our glasses, but he does place the people in our lives that do those things for us. We are blessed. Every single one of us are blessed with every day that we can get up out of the bed in the morning and see the sunshine or even see the rain clouds. Um, we're blessed. We're, we were truly, truly blessed. Um, so do you think it's selfish to keep those blessings to yourself? Well, I kind of do. Um, you know, when you outgrow your clothes, um, rather than just pitching them, um, sometimes your parents will donate those to those that are less fortunate. You know, there's different organizations that will take that kind of thing. Um, one of the blessings that Nitro has is the Nitro Food Pantry. The people that work there bless the people in the community that don't have food to eat every day, that need that little extra help. And the clothes that you donate, you know, that person that receives those, sometimes they get them for free. Um, they get those because they aren't quite as blessed as, as we were to have had, you know, a, a lot of the choices that we have to choose from. Well, you know, can you believe it's been almost a year since we were in the church building to celebrate and to come together and worship God every single Sunday? I know if you'd asked me a year ago if I'd thought that we would still be doing virtual church services and I would still be doing these video recordings of the children's message, I would have said, nah, no way. Well, here we are. But you know what? We've been blessed to be able to continue to have our church services. Um, I know I'd never really done selfie videos before all of this started. And, and I'll have to say it's been a really um, big learning experience for me. And I've talked with Pastor Greg, and I think he kind of felt the same way when he and I talked about it. Well, one of the things um, this coming week, um, there's a holiday. It's not a really big celebrated holiday in the Methodist Church, but it's an Irish holiday. It's St. Patrick's Day. And 
you know, the, the Irish have a lot of different um, phrases and poems and, and um, celebrations that we might not understand, but they have um, some written words, kind of poetry, if, if you want to call it that. They're called blessings. And there's one that I thought was kind of appropriate for this morning, um, the fact that we've been away apart from each other for uh, almost a year, and I want to share that with you. It said, may your days be many and your troubles be few. May all of God's blessings descend upon you. May peace be within you. May your heart always be strong. May you find what you're seeking wherever you may roam. So I want you to remember that. Always remember to count your blessings. Um, those that God makes sure that we have every single day in our lives. Let's have our closing prayer. Good morning, Lord. Help us to remember our blessings from both you and from those who we love and love us. No matter how small or insignificant they may seem, may help us to remember to appreciate them all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You all have a good week. I'll talk to you again next Sunday. Bye. They traveled from Mount Or along the route to the Red Sea to go around Edom. But the people grew impatient on the way. They spoke against God and against Moses and said, Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? There is no bread, there is no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent venomous snakes among them. They bit the people and many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, we sinned when we spoke against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take the snakes away from us. So Moses prayed for the people. The Lord said to Moses, make a snake and put it up on a pole. Anyone who is bitten can look at it and live. So Moses made a bronze snake and put it up on a pole. Then when anyone was bitten by a snake and looked at the bronze snake, they lived. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, may the words of my mouth be yours, and may the meditations that stir in each of our hearts be truly pleasing in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. What is it that you're afraid of? I mean, truth is we all have certain fears. Fears of heights is a problem for a lot of people. Most people are at least somewhat afraid of looking down from a great height. And based on a noted survey, 23% are very afraid of doing so. Fear of flying is also high on the list of fears as 14% are very afraid and 35% are very or somewhat afraid. And of course, there's no list of fears that, that's complete without snakes. Snakes is the top of the list as the most common of fears with more than a third of all adults indicating that they're very afraid of them. And considering how a serpent got the best of God's people back in the Garden of Eden, it's no wonder why they might be afraid of the snakes in their journey from Mount Hor to the Promised Land. Moses has led the, had led the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt, and for days they've been walking around in the wilderness of the desert, all the while God is providing them with bread to eat, and Moses is leading the way. And because they are weary and frustrated, not sure where they're going or if their leader even has a clue what he's doing, they seem confident wherever he's leading them, they're about to die. Well, needless to say, they begin to rebel and, and the let's go back to Egypt committee gets all worked up. 
I mean, let's go back to Egypt. They whine and, and the introductory notes of the book of Numbers in the NIV study Bible describe the ancient Israelites in terms that that might describe any one of us. It says those whom God had redeemed from slavery in Egypt and and with whom he had made a covenant at Mount Sinai responded with faith, not with faith, gratitude and obedience but with unbelief and gratitude and repeated acts of rebellion, which came to extreme expression and a refusal to undertake the conquest of Canaan. Now for their refusal, they would spend the next 38 years wandering in the wilderness until the last of the, the last of the ones who were unbelieving, ungrateful and rebellious had died. They wouldn't inherit the promised land. And so fast forward to today's text where we meet them in the third stage of their long wilderness journey, the final leg, so to speak. And after having just defeated the king of Arad and, and having their path blocked in Edom, which meant taking a longer way around, you can imagine both their frustration and their joy as they head directly to the promised land. Instead, they traveled from, from Mount Hor along the route to the Red Sea to go around Edom. And, and so yet, here they have another detour, one of many seemingly never-ending and difficult parts of their journey. And I guess they had had enough, and they snapped. They had had enough, they grew impatient on the way, and, and maybe that's understandable for even us. I mean, we live in an impatient culture, but they took their impatience to an extreme. They spoke against God and, and against Moses. And, and it would be one thing to speak only against Moses, their, their human leader, even though he was chosen by God to lead them. But it was something else to speak against God, not just to complain or, or to lament or argument, but directly against God in rebellion and rejection. And what they said points to, to why God responded as God did. They challenged the redemptive action of God that made them free. Said, why did you bring us up from Egypt to kill us in the desert? But that's, that isn't what God had done at all. I mean, God had liberated them so they could live in the land flowing with milk and honey and, and their death in the wilderness. It was the consequence of their own sin, their own lack of faith. And, and they hadn't died yet because even in that dry and barren land, God had provided sustenance in bread and water. But they complained that, that there's no bread and water in direct denial of the reality of the gracious gifts that, that God had given them. And to make matters worse, they say that, that they detest the gift of manna from heaven, calling it miserable food. I mean, without a doubt, Israel is rejecting the grace of God in all its forms and God's great redemptive acts on their behalf and God's daily provision for their lives. I mean, all that God had done for them out of gracious love is, is spurned by an impatient, unbelieving, and ungrateful and rebellious people. And this isn't their first time responding like this, but this time... This time, they, they take it to a new level in rejecting God's grace. So instead of waiting for Moses to intercede for Israel, as, as Moses often did, God responded by immediately punishing their sin with a plague of poisonous snakes. Now, now let me stop here for a moment and, and acknowledge what many of you may be thinking. I mean, this is one of those stories in the Bible that that turns people off from faith. I mean, how can we reconcile such a story with the message of, of God is love or, or the, the favorite hymn of ours, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. I mean, how are we supposed to reconcile God losing God's patience out of anger? I mean, history even tells us this, and this is the kind of story that, that causes many to reject the Old Testament and, and its angry God and to focus exclusively on the New Testament and the love of God in Christ. But you see, before we reject this story, the reality is that the Bible in, in both the Old and New Testament, it does talk about the anger of God. 
And that is especially so when, when people absolutely reject God's grace as Israel has, has done here. God has, has done everything for them, but they completely turn their backs on God. So why wouldn't God be angry? Not just sad or heartbroken or disappointed, but downright angry. I mean, what human parent wouldn't feel the same? I mean, I, true, parents don't kill their children. Well, some have, but, but they're prosecuted and placed in mental institutions. So how do we rationalize what God has done here? Well, to begin with, we, we don't have to because God is the judge, not us. And maybe this shocking part of the story is, is meant to teach us something important. I mean, if you look throughout the scripture where God's anger is mentioned, it's often emphasized in terms of, of God's wrath. wrath. Wrath denotes the active feeling of God against sin, expressing in human categories an important attribute of God, that he is holy and righteous and rejects everything that is not. And one commentator says, an absolute rejection of the grace of God will put us in danger of eternal separation from God. Grace is our only hope, and if we turn our back on God's outstretched hand, we might very well die. And that makes God angry, because God doesn't want us to die. God wants us to live abundantly and eternally. God's anger is simply his love expressed in fire. I mean, we know that because of, of what happens next in response to Moses' intervention, God's grace once again provides salvation from sin and punishment. And, and it's true, salvation doesn't come the way that Israel had hoped. I mean, in fact, they told Moses to, to pray that the Lord will take the, take the snakes away from us. But instead, God told Moses to make a poisonous snake and, and place it on a pole. And whoever is bitten can look at it and live. And so that's what Moses did and has promised Anyone bitten by a snake who then looked at the bronze snake, they lived. So as we hear this, this strange and difficult story, what's the good news message for us? Now keep in mind that, again, God didn't respond to the people's request to send the snakes away. To do so would leave the people stuck in their sins. Or, or as a reading, a reading from Ephesians says, it would leave them dead in sin. Instead of changing their situation, which, which is all that Israel wanted, God knew that they needed to be changed from within. These people who had rejected God's amazing grace needed to learn to, to accept God's grace again. They had turned away from God who had saved them time after time after time. So they needed, they needed to turn toward God again and to look at God's saving work. The snakes remained so they would learn to look at the snake on a pole. And, and the, but again, the snakes weren't the main problem. Their rejection of God's grace was. That way leads to death of the worst sort. So Moses calls them to accept God's grace by believing the word of God and looking at the snake on a pole. And again, it's strange and, and maybe even troubling as this passage may be. This story was important to Jesus in John 3 14 where Jesus says just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness so must a human one be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life in other words this story from numbers of Moses lifting up a serpent in the wilderness it foreshadows Good Friday and an Easter morning this passage tells us that the answer to the Israelites wandering in the wilderness was lifting their eyes to see death on a pole. Only the snake raised by Moses' arm gave new life to the Israelites and protected the rest. But the church says the answer to our wandering in the wilderness of our sin is when Jesus is lifted high on the cross, the love of God given for the world. The tragedy of the story is rather than receiving the heart of God, that we tried to remake Jesus in our own image. And when this idea of, of Jesus didn't work, he was rejected and he was hung on a cross. 
And so Holy Week and Good Friday tell us that the path to redemption is indeed covered with suffering. This is grace. God's grace is is the remedy that we need. It's the answer to whatever it is that we fear. It's the remedy to whatever sin is killing us. It's the remedy to whatever it is that separates us from God. And ultimately, this story from Numbers isn't really about snakes. And and it isn't about worshiping an odd sort of idol. It's about acknowledging that we need help. We need a Savior. And as Paul tells us in his letter to the Ephesians, we are saved by God's grace of our faith. This salvation is God's gift. It's not something you did that you can be proud of. Instead, we are God's accomplishment created in Christ Jesus to do good things. God planned for those good things to be the way that we live our lives. All the Israelites needed to do was to look up and live. And the same, the same goes for us. Lift up your eyes to the cross and trust in God's redeeming grace. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now 
is a sign of our faith and is an act of worship, let us offer to God our gifts as we receive our offering. I'm in a fight, not physical. I'm in a war, but not with this world. You are the light that's beautiful. And I want more. Oh, oh, oh that's yours. Joy unspeakable that won't go away. And just enough strength to live for today. So never have to worry what tomorrow will bring. Faith is on solid rock. I am counting on God. I am counting on, I am counting on God. I am counting on, I am counting on God. I'm in a fight, not physical. I'm in a war, but not with this world. You are the light that's beautiful. I want more, oh, oh, that's yours. Joy unspeakable that won't go away. Just enough strength to live for today. So I never have to worry what tomorrow will bring. My faith's on solid rock and I'm counting on God. The miracle of Christ in me. Is the mystery that sets me free I'm nothing like I used to be Just open up your eyes and see Joy unspeakable that won't go away Just enough strength to live for today I never have to Worry what tomorrow will bring. My faith's on solid rock. I'm counting on God. I'm counting on, counting on God. Counting on, counting on God. You know what I'm thinking right now? If you're watching this, it's really easy words. So you all just sing along here. One, two. I am counting on, I'm counting on God. I am counting on, counting on God. I am counting on, counting on God. I am counting on, counting on God. Do you believe that? Whatever you're worried about, just give it to Him and count on Him. Let us pray. Great and generous God, we are surrounded by things that steal our lives, inflict and destroy us. The tithes and offering we share with you this day are a way of keeping us focused, not on the things that would take life away, but will renew our lives, hope, love, compassion, empathy. As the Israelites looked to a serpent on a pole for healing, we look to a savior on a cross to be brought back to life. In that holy name, Jesus the Messiah, we pray, amen. And now you receive this blessing. As God has shared the best with you, now you're challenged to go out to share your blessings with others. And may the peace and love of God go with you always. And may all of God's people say, Amen.